Hey everyone, Kyle here. I just wanted to announce that after four years, my first first author paper has been accepted into the Astrophysical Journal after one resubmission. And uh, I just wanted to make a video giving you my thoughts on it. It's been about, about a little bit more than 24 hours since I got the news. And I just wanted to sort of take some time to, to think about my feelings about it and uh, explain it to you all and give you some context as to why this one really <laughs> means a lot to me. When I first got the news on Thursday afternoon at the end of the AAAS, American Astronomical Society meeting, I, you know, I, I initially just felt a wave of relief. It just felt so nice and just, you know, validating that four years of work has is going to see the light of day. Um, and I didn't have time to process in the moment what was going on, but, you know, over the past couple of days, I've, I've thought a bit more about why this, why this, this means a lot to me. And I, I want to try and give you some context as to why it means so much, because honestly, I've just, I've just been through so much over the past couple of years. Uh, I think we all have. And I started this work in, um, 2018, June of 2018, nearly four years ago. I started this work and, you know, I had just switched my emphasis in graduate school from condensed matter physics to astronomy slash astrophysics a couple of months prior. I had just taken my first set of astronomy courses in my entire life. I never had any astronomy background whatsoever. I started learning how to use the Python programming language because I'd never programmed that before. It was just such a, it was just such a, just a lot of change for me in the, that year in general. Um, and, um, sorry if I'm getting a little bit just emotional. It's just, it's just hard to, to, to really explain how it's making me all feel because, I mean, it's been four years and, you know, right after I started doing research, I, I had this catastrophic injury on July 5th, 2018, just not even a month after I started this project. I tore some cartilage in my left knee. I made a video about it on my YouTube channel, which I'll, I'll link in the description below. But, you know, having that injury right at the start, I just it really just prevented me from really giving all of my attention and energy to the research project. And I had these negative thoughts of, of me thinking I was just a drain on my advisor's resources. You know, I feel like I'm wasting his grant money. I'm not giving everything I can to this project just because I, I literally can. You know, I, I had to I had to go to the doctor appointments. I had to get surgery had to, you know, I had to rehabilitate. I had to, I had to go to physical therapy for over a year. And, you know, all while trying to balance doing a research project while also still taking like second year astronomy courses in graduate school. And, you know, all of these different factors was weighing on me. And I, I don't know if I really had a chance to really think about it in the moment. I think when it was happening, I was just focused on trying to get better, trying to trying to be able to walk again. Um, you know, I had crutches for, for a couple of months and I switched to a cane and, you know, it, it, I don't know that looking back on that experience makes me just really, just makes me really appreciate this paper more. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and then like, you know, I had a really big breakthrough in 2019. I was able to, like in April, May 2019, I was able to, um, uh, I was able to reproduce a published result. I essentially had written this code in Python to try and uh, re reproduce a result from a collaborator uh, uh, in my group. And I was able to do it. And it was really nice to see that I was able to get the same published results as they had done with my own independent construction, my own independent Python program scripts and and whatnot and it was it felt very validating in that moment you know i felt like wow i can i can really do this um and then there was uh, difficulties with the next part the next phase of the research um going from the published you know rep reproducing the published result to start m making my own results applying what i had made to, to the new data set and essentially is actually in th th that poster back there actually that was the that was the first data set that I applied my new program to on that poster on the wall back there. This poster was created back in November of 2019. And I remember thinking how close I, I, I might be to getting this paper 
out then, back in November 2019. Um, and then I went to the last AAS conference in in January 2020, where I had I was presenting actually uh, the results, or not the results, but preliminary results of the work I just you know pu uh, published yesterday or two days ago. So just try and keep this in mind. It's January 2020. This is about uh, what it was. What is that now? You know, two and a half years ago. Okay, and I have preliminary results for the stuff that just got published two days ago. So two and a half year span since then. And then, of course, you know, COVID came and just completely turned, you know, everything around for everyone in the entire world. And, you know, I think I was scared. I was I was not sure how, you know, things um, I just didn't know what, how things were going to go. I just, you know, I really, really had to just try and focus um, on my work between the months of like May to the, uh, March 2020 and May 2020, because that's when I advanced to candidacy, May 6, 2020. I made a video about that on my channel. You can check out as well. And, you know, after I advanced to candidacy, that was a huge, huge high for me. That was probably the probably the last big achievement in graduate school I think I, I had since um, up, until, up until two days ago when my paper got accepted. So it was like the past two years just just struggling with the research. Like, for example, in October 2020 or September 2021, one of those, it was probably end of September, I, I even had a draft of the results I, I, I published two days ago. I had a draft ready. And then I was looking at one of the last figures I had created. And I, I really delved into my code. And I realized I just made this horrible, horrible mistake. I just completely invalidated the results that I had found. It just it messed everything up. I had to redo everything again. I just... It was just so heartbreaking. It was just so depressing. And I just was like, how could I have done this? Like, I just, I just messed up. You know, I messed up really badly. And, you know, I had to try and shake that off and just try and just redo everything. Um, I ended up exploring some new avenues for the research. And then in June 2021, I have my first draft of this paper ready a year ago, just about almost nearly exactly a year ago. My first draft I gave to my advisor you know, it takes a few weeks, gets back to me, it's all red, all red, like 20 plus pages, just, just, you know, just, you know, it's just, um, it didn't look good, you know, it, it, it clearly needed a lot of work done, and I just, I just kept thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever, like, how, how, this is going to take so long, um, and, you know, going through that revision process with him like five, six times, every time the red is getting just a little bit, there's just a little bit less red each time, a little bit less red each time. And finally, he, he tells me it's it's good to go in the sense that I can send it to the to the collaborators, I can get their feedback on it, and they all give me overwhelmingly positive reviews. And then I can finally submit it to this journal. And, you know, I just... um. It just like all this time, I just keep thinking to myself, there's no way this is going to get through. Like, this is, there's no way. I mean, I don't know. I always thought, I thought, I just thought that the referee wouldn't like it. I just thought that, I don't know. There's so much stuff that happened up until that point that prevented this work from getting out there that it just seemed like I, I just adopted this really negative outlook on the situation. Um, and I was really just struggling, you know, um, I guess mentally, emotionally about it. Um, and you know, I think I credit, I think it's imposter syndrome, honestly, it's, it's really just thinking like, you know, I don't belong here. I, you know, I'm a fraud, you know, it doesn't matter if I pass candidacy. It's like, I, I can't do science. I'm, I'm never going to get published, you know, um, all these really just negative things and, um, really false things. And I, I think all of the people in my life, like my friends, my family, my PhD advisor, my collaborators, I don't think any of them doubted me. That's the thing. I don't think any of them doubted me, man. I had this fear of like, oh, I'm going to get found out. I'm going to, I'm going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to prove that I can do this. And, um, but I did, <laughs> I did. And, um, I think, you know, having, I think the important lesson for me to learn in all of this was to just sort of, you know, stay the course and just try and persevere even through these hardships, even through, you know, the physical challenges 
the the professional challenges, the technical challenges with the actual research is, and um, just uh, learning how to believe in myself and give myself the reassurance that I can do this because, you know, I could have gotten all the reassurance in the world. I could have had all my friends and family, my advisor, my collaborators, you know, I never doubted that they believed in me, but I needed to believe in me and I needed to be able to give myself the reassurance that I can pick myself back up and I can, I can accomplish this. So I think that is just the lesson I would want to impart to you all is that, you know, in my opinion, I don't think there's any better reassurance than the reassurance that you can give yourself when you're going through a hard time. Because if, if you believe you can get through it, you can get through it. And, um, you know, having this paper now accepted into the Astrophysical Journal, it just really gives me the confidence that I can do it again and I can do it better next time and I can do it um, more efficiently. And, you know, I've just taken so many lessons out of this experience that um, I think I can take with me moving forward. So with that being said, I think that will conclude this video. I really appreciate you all for watching. Thank you for following my journey. It's been one heck of a ride, five years in graduate school, done, one more year to go, and uh, I am committed to making this last year the best I can possibly um, have. And uh, I would just would want you guys to uh, appreciate and watch the journey along with me, and I hope to see you in future videos. So thank you all for watching.